with me to the book of 1st Kings, 1st Kings chapter 21, 1st Kings chapter 21. Thank you for being here this evening and a wonderful, wonderful group of people on a Sunday night, Time Change Sunday and uh, praise the Lord for that. Uh, not long ago, not long ago, I got an email in my inbox and uh, opened it up and um, in the email it began to give a story uh, about our church and uh, some happenings in our church, the gospel being preached at our church. And the, the email went from the gospel being preached into our church to, Pastor, I'm, I'm slightly concerned uh, about our church. I'm slightly concerned about uh, some of the teachings that's happening out in the highways and hedges. Uh, Pastor, I'm concerned because some of the soul owners are out there teaching that once you're saved, you're always saved. Amen. And they're teaching out there that once you trust Christ as your Savior, that Jesus has paid for all of your sins. And Pastor, I'm very concerned uh, about that doctrine right there because, frankly, Pastor, I don't believe once saved, always saved. I don't believe that Jesus paid for all of our sins, basically, in a nutshell. And, uh, Pastor, basically, what are you going to do about that? Well, I want to just say, quite frankly, I'm holding on to my vineyard. Amen. I'm staying put that Jesus paid for all of my sins. I believe that when I got saved, I believe it now. And just quite frankly, I'm not changing. Amen. Amen. I'm holding on to my vineyard. Here, Naboth had a vineyard. He was given a vineyard. He has a vineyard. And the king, king comes up to him and says, I want, I want your vineyard. And Naboth says, no, this is my vineyard. And Ahab begins to say, well, I want your vineyard. I'll give you a better piece of property. I'll give you a better vineyard. And Naboth says, basically, he says, no, I'm holding on to my vineyard. It's my vineyard. Amen. Let's stand for the reading of God's word, if you will. We're going to read 1 Kings chapter 21, and we'll read it all together Verses 1, 2, and 3. Are you ready? And it came to pass after these things that Naboth the Jezreelite had a vineyard, which was in Jezreel, hard by the palace of Ahab king of Samaria. And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard, that I may have it for a garden of herbs, because it is near unto my house, and I will give thee for or if it seem good to thee, I will give thee worth of it in money. And Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. Woo! Had a vineyard next to the king's palace. And old King Ahab, friendly King Ahab, King Ahab, who had a wonderful wife named Jezebel, said, I want that vineyard. Give me that vineyard. I will buy your vineyard. I'll trade you for that vineyard. And Naboth just looked and he says, no, no way. I'm holding on to my vineyard. By the way, you get all a little bit further in the story and, it, and he, he took that stand and it cost him something. But he held on to the vineyard. Uh, he uh, was really pressured into giving up that vineyard, but he held on to that vineyard to the point where he died for that vineyard. There's some things in our, our Christian walk that we need to hold on to. Uh, listen, I believe salvation is by grace through faith. I'm holding on to that vineyard. I believe you get baptized not to go to heaven, but you get baptized to show you they're not ashamed of Christ. I'm holding on to that vineyard. Uh, the King James Bible, I'm holding on to that vineyard. That's the title of the message. I'm holding on to my vineyard. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy. And boy, the pressure that Naboth, Naboth was under, Lord. The king comes and puts the, the hammer down on him. Give me that vineyard. And I'm thankful that Naboth took a stand. And that stand that Naboth stood uh, for pleased you, Lord. And Lord, I pray that you help us to look at how this man of God stood for you. Help us thousands of years later to be willing to take a stand for some things. Where it seems like people all around us are just giving up, not putting up a fight, just giving into the world. Lord, I pray that you help us to be willing to take a stand. We love you and need you in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, what a wonderful story. You know, it, it is a big deal. Salvation by grace through faith is a big deal. 
That email right there, hey, pastor, don't you know, once saved, always saved, it's not a big deal right there. You need to change your ways. It is a big deal. It matters to God. It's in the Bible right there. And there's some things that we need to be willing to stand up and, and maybe fight about some things. Oh, you go over to, to Seattle, you go to San Francisco, you go even to Norfolk, and there is a different world out there today. Right. Boy, it's, it's unbelievable how the world is changing. And, you, you know, the homosexuality, the sodomy that is out there, men with men and women with women, and openly oh. displaying their affection uh, we look at that and we say, well, e equality, the, uh, the uh, wonderful governor of our state begins to sign laws of equality, equality, equality. What's wrong with equality? Well, the, wrong, the problem with it is sin. That's right. It's sin. That's I'm right. holding on to my vineyard right there. And if you uh, look with me back here, and uh, I love it. I want to read it again, verse number one. And it came to pass after these things that Naboth, the Jesuelite, had a vineyard. You notice those words, had a vineyard. Do you have a vineyard? Do you have something that you're willing to hold on? Do you have some beliefs and some thoughts and some... Uh, by the way, can I just say they ought to be biblical? Or right. these beliefs and this system of doctrine that's found in the Bible is a, a vineyard that you have that God has given you and you ought to hold it tight in your hands. Do you have a vineyard? Do you have a vineyard? I, I hope you do. I have a vineyard and I believe that's why you're here this evening because you have a vineyard. And number two, it's, or verse number two, it says, And Ahab spake unto Naboth, saying, Give me thy vineyard. There's always somebody trying to take your vineyard from you. There's always somebody out and about trying to pry the word of God out of your, your grips and saying, Hey, the words of God don't matter. And I, I wrote a list here of things uh, that I believe are my vineyard in my life. And maybe you have a different list, but they're going to be similar. But my wife is my vineyard. Amen. Well, I want to say my wife. That's my wife. I love my wife. She's precious to me. Boy, you, you say, Pastor, you got to tell your wife, uh, do you feel guilty? Absolutely not. Boy, I got out with my wife. She's my woman. She's my mate. She's what God has given me. I love her with all of my heart. She matters to me. Hey, my wife is my vineyard. I'm holding on to my vineyard. Amen. Amen. My children. Oh, I love my children. Uh, Jonathan, you watched Nehemiah. Nehemiah, did you stay with Big John? Oh, yeah. And every time I called Big John about how you stayed with him, he said, oh, Nehemiah is a good boy. And Nehemiah, you're a good boy, aren't you? Yeah, you obeyed Big John. You only had to spank you three or four or five or six times, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. And uh, so I got back, and Big John's trying to take my, my son Nehemiah and sort of adopt him into his family. <laughs> John, you're only allowed to have girls, okay? That's it right there. Uh, little Nehemiah, he's my vineyard. That's my child. He's mine, okay? But, but in reality, he is my son. I love my children. Amen. I love my Nehemiah that God has given me. And you know, he, God has given me them to raise for his honor and for his glory. Uh, the world is, it's sad. It's so sad. Manny, while we were gone, there was a story of two drug addicts. They pulled up to a fast food restaurant. And it's just a sad story. The, the man was out there using drugs in the parking lot. He passed out. Police were called. And they got there, and oh, inside the, uh, the, the restaurant there, the lady, she was pregnant, she was passed out in the, the restroom, and she gave birth to a child, and the child, she didn't even know it, fell down into the toilet. And, and it's a sad, sad situation. That precious baby, that precious child, that God, it's a gift from God, yes. Right. But that child needs, needs Jesus. And, and you know, that's not my vineyard, that child right there. But I'm going to take the gift that God has given me. I'm not throwing him in a toilet. Amen. I'm not going to throw him by the wayside. That's my vineyard. I'm going to hold them tight. I'm holding on to my vineyard. The King James Bible is my vineyard. Amen. Oh, I'm thankful for this book right here. It's true from beginning to end. There's thousands of people who will criticize it and say there's errors in that King James Bible. And I'll say, listen, this is the pure Word of God, the inspired Word of God. God has given me this. I'm holding on to my vineyard. I believe every word of it. I'm holding on to it. Hey, my salvation, the gift of God is eternal life. For God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Every week I get something and it'll begin to criticize the simple plan of salvation. 
this last week it was somebody saying, well, baptism, 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 baptism. Baptism never saved anybody. Right. Jesus saves. Right. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. And the gospel is not baptism. The gospel is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I'm holding on to thy uh, vineyard, the vineyard of salvation. My godly friends, I, am, I love this church. And, and it's not the buildings, the people. I love the people in here. We're all imperfect people, are we not? You got an imperfect pastor, and uh, but man, I love I love people. And when and somebody comes up and begins to criticize one of you, I want to pop him in the nose. Amen. Why? Because I love you. You're my friends. You're my brothers and sisters in Christ. And yeah, we may not be perfect, but we're a group of people that God loves. We're a group of people that are trying to rally together to believe God's book, to tell people in Chesapeake about a lost and dying uh, world about Jesus Christ. I'm holding on to my vineyard of friends. Now, by the way, my opportunity to pray. You know, we, we, we have the ability to pray, to go directly to, to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And people try to steal that vineyard and say, hey, you need to go to a priest or you need to do this. No, listen, I'm holding on to my vineyard of prayer. I can go directly to the Lord in prayer. Uh, my freedom to tell people about Jesus Christ. We have the freedom, the freedom, the freedom to tell people about Jesus Christ. Well, pastor, you got to be careful today because if you go tell people about Jesus Christ, you're, you're going to offend some people. Well, let them be offended. Amen. Let them be offended. Listen, they're going to be more offended when they die and burn in hell forever and ever. And they look over and say, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you tell me? And I'm holding on to my, my vineyard of telling people about Jesus. I'm holding on to my vineyard of biblical standards and convictions. Amen. That one didn't get quite as much. They almost did. And uh, praise the Lord, you're waiting for me to fill in some blanks right there. My biblical, we're all going to agree that we believe the Bible, do we not? Amen. Yes. And so biblical standards and convictions, we believe them, do we not? Amen. And we're going to hold on to them. doesn't matter if the world changes, the Bible doesn't. Right. We're sticking to the Bible. We're sticking to the Bible. I'm going to hold on to those biblical standards and convictions. Hey, gender distinction matters. Amen. Man created, God created a male and female. They're still male and female today. Amen. Amen. And we can go down on that list, but hold on to your vineyard. Do you have a vineyard? Do you have a vineyard that you, that's yours, that God has given you? Now, when you make the decision to hold on to your vineyard, I want you to look back with me at verse number four. You make the decision to hold on to your vineyard. Say, I believe this. I believe that God uh, gave me a, a wonderful wife. I'm holding on to my vineyard. God gave me the gift of salvation. I'm holding on to my vineyard. Verse number four, and Ahab came into his house heavy and what? Why? Because of the word. The what, what word? I'm holding on to my vineyard. The word which Naboth the Jezulite had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. What does that mean? I'm holding on to my vineyard. I'm staying for it. That's my vineyard. I don't care if you're the king. That's my inheritance. That's my vineyard. That's my place right there. It was given me from my fathers. I'm holding on to my vineyard. But it displeased some people. It displeased the king. It displeased Ahab. By the way, if somebody gets offended, I'm holding on to my wife, let them be displeased. Right. Just understand when you hold on to something, you're going to make some people ha unhappy. By the way, some people, we're, we're such pacifists. We want to make everybody happy. But I'm just going to tell you, you're not going to make everybody happy. Right. In the end, what you want to do is you want to make God happy. Amen. You want to look and please the Lord in all that you say, think, and do. And if me holding on to my wife as my vineyard makes somebody unhappy, let them be unhappy. Amen. Hey, my children, that's my children, not the states, that's right. not the government. They're my children. Amen. Amen. They're given to me by the King of kings and Lord of lords, not by our government. Amen. And when the government tries to steal my children, I'm holding on to my vineyard. I'll fight for that. Right. Now, it may offend some people, but they're my children that God has given me. I'm holding on to my vineyard. Hey, let them be mad. Boy, with a King James Bible, I'm holding on to my vineyard. Let them be mad. Uh, my salvation, godly friends, my opportunity to pray, and that list goes on and on. Some will not like your decision. When you have some standards, some convictions, some vineyards in your life, and you say, I'm not budging, I'm not moving, I don't care, I love God too much to do that, you're going to make some people mad. Sometimes it's your family, sometimes it's even your friends, sometimes it's even other church members. But don't worry about it. Hold on to that vineyard. Number three, if you look at this in verse number five. Some, well, look at this, but Jezebel, <laughs> you get Jezebel involved in anything, you're in trouble. Amen? 
Jezebel. Just we don't we don't we don't want to call our daughters Jezebel. Amen. Amen. Uh, Brother Jordan, no, <laughs> no, none, none of us. Right? We're we're in agreement with that. Right? Praise Miss Nessan. No Jezebels in our house. Yeah. Amen. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite, <laughs> and said unto him, give, give me thy vineyard for money. And by the way, you, you read the rest of this, he puts a pity party on there. And the point here is some will make up lies and be deceitful to get your vineyard. Jezebel heard of this, but all of a sudden, so I'll, I'll get that vineyard for you. And she began to lie about this good, godly man named Naboth. And, and how did she spread the lies? Now, if you fast forward to today's manner, the way they spread lies is through sometimes the email. Sometimes it's social media, Facebook and YouTube. And listen, all of a sudden, you'll get a letter or something like that from social media, all of a sudden criticizing Naboth and say, how dare Naboth hold on to his vineyard? Who does he think he is? And they'll twist things and uh, malign things. And all of a sudden, you'll be looking at Jezebel, and she'll all of a sudden, you'll start believing the Jezebels rather than the Naboths. Listen, stick with Naboth. Stick with the Bible-believing person. The person says, give me that vineyard. Let me keep that vineyard right there. She wrote letters. She uh, wrote Facebook posts and YouTube posts. And she wrote emails and sent them throughout the, the community right there to lie about Naboth. And by the way, it works. People believe the lie. People begin to believe the lie. She wrote letters to, in Ahab's name, verse number 8. Sealed them with his seal. Looked authentic. It looked real. Verse number 9. And she wrote in the letters saying, Proclaim a fast. It looks spiritual, but it wasn't. Proclaim a fast and set Naboth on high among the people. It was a lie. It was a lie. It was a lie. When you stand for your wife, when you stand for gender distinction, when you stand for uh, pro-life, we believe that uh, a baby in the womb is alive. Amen. And people begin to malign you and lie to you. And they'll begin to misalign words. Pro, we're poor choice? No, you're pro death. That's, right. That's a lie. It sounds good, but it's a lie. Amen? Amen. Amen. I think we all agree with that, right? Ah, J. Frank Norris, a great man. You ever heard of J. Frank Norris? Probably heard me preach about him. I love reading about this great man of God. But by the way, he was just like you and me. And he had people that put pressure on him. He was just a young pastor. A young pastor that wanted to, to please people. He wanted to please God, yes, but he wanted to please people. He was called to the First Baptist Church in Fort Worth, Texas. And there he was. He would preach Sunday after Sunday. And every message he went, not, he wasn't thinking about the Lord. He was thinking about pleasing people. And he'd look out there and he didn't want to offend anybody. And, it, and a year went by. And he's preaching to please the people. But inside of him is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is, is saying, hey, it's not about them, it's about me, it's about Jesus. And listen to these people, they're not following the, the Word of God. You need to preach the Word. You need to preach it unashamedly. The fear of man bringeth a snare. Another month went by. Another a month went by. After another year, two years, finally he says, I can't take it anymore. I'm either going to preach the truth and give them the full counsel of the Word of God, or I'm going to quit being a pastor. Boy, he went out in the highways and hedges, began to tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what happened? Some of the unsightly people of the world. I think one was named Dominique. I think one was named Dominique. Came to church. And all of a sudden, some of those highfalutin people said, what's Dominique doing here? Who does he think he is to come to an art church? Boy, he's not all there. Boy, he doesn't have all the, the brain cells that everybody else around here has. We don't want him there. And J. Frank Norris said, it doesn't matter what you want. It matters what the Lord wants. Amen. Listen, Christ died for Dominique. Christ paid for his sins. Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. We're going to give him the truth whether you like it or not. By the way, when it came down to it, some of those church members turned on J. Frank Norris. And they began to make up lies. They began to raise up deceit, and they went a little bit further. They decided if he's not going to listen to us, we're going to burn the church down. They burnt the church down. Burned it down to the ground. And it's a terrible story. They rebuilt only to what? Burn it down again. 
And, and we look at that. It happened to Naboth. It happened to J. Frank Norris. It's going to happen to you and me. We're going to stand for truth. We're going to hold on to our vineyard, and it's not going to make some people happy. But don't be surprised when they begin to raise up lies against you and deceit. Keep your eyes focused on the Lord and say, it doesn't matter what happens around me. It doesn't matter if I have the flames and the sticks burning around me. I'm going to keep my eyes focused unto you. You're the author and finisher of my faith. I'm going to keep serving you. I'm going to hold on to my vineyard. Hold on to your vineyard. Hold on to your vineyard. Some will stop at nothing to get your vineyard. By the way, you, you get down to the end, they killed them. Murder. Dead. And, you know, that, that's not abnormal in the Bible. Can I say that? Stephen was killed. Paul was put to death. John the Baptist was beheaded. You get to Hebrews chapter 11. I want to read slightly, if you can not lose focus here. But if you can just listen to this and remember these are people, real people. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail to tell of Gideon, of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, and of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, held on to their vineyards. It doesn't really say that, but it is saying that. Amen. Quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong. Waxed valiant in fight. By the way, wax valiant in fight? What does that mean? They didn't lay down for everything. They said, hey, we're going to stand for truth and right. We're not going to cave in to, to the world. We're going to do right whether the world goes crazy or not. Where they were strong, not weak. They were strong, not in their might, but in the power of God. Boy, they fight. Turn to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance. They were tortured, not accepting deliverance. Hey, that's Naboth, right. tortured, right. even killed, yeah. didn't accept deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonments. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented. And I love this, of whom the world... It's not worthy. Who's Ahab? Why do we bow down to Ahab? Why do you bow down to that person putting pressure on you to change? Why? For what? Who are they compared to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? They can't compare to whom the world is not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, Received not the promise. By the way, Naboth probably didn't receive the promise. He stood firm, but he was killed. God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. And then, I'm going to last with this, the last point, because Naboth did die. Held on to his vineyard, it cost him his life. He held on to his vineyard, cost him his life, but remember the Lord loves you. This is important because you get to verse 17, it says, and the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet King Ahab, uh, Ahab, king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth. The Lord said that. The Lord looked down and saw Ahab in that vineyard, stealing that vineyard, robbing that vineyard, killing Naboth right there. And the Lord was not happy about it. The Lord took care of business. It says in verse 19, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou killed and also taken possession? Woo! Remember, though he was killed, the Lord said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Naboth was in heaven. And, and praise God, we look at the end right there. The Lord was in control. The Lord loved Naboth. Stephen Ray Nichols, we saw a picture of him earlier, in the hospital, taking a stand for Christ, trying to do right, forsaking the world and living for Jesus. And all of a sudden, the Lord took his health. And, and it's a terrible situation. He felt all alone. He receives a, a letter, by the way, when he's in the hospital, uh, about uh, some of the things he had did. And that letter began to write about, hey, Stephen Ray, uh, Nichols, I listened to one of your songs. I was running from God. But when I listened to that song, I made a decision to get right with God. And I want to let you know, you, you helped change my life and give me, bring me back to the Lord. And, and as, as Stephen Ray Nichols said that, 
He's basically saying, sometimes I feel all alone. Sometimes I serve the Lord and things don't turn out right. But God will show me in the end that he loves me, he cares for me, is working in my life. Amen. It's the end of the sermon. I hope you have a vineyard. Amen. hope you have something that you hold on to. Amen. hope you're not all uh, fickle and uh, all wavery all over the world and in your beliefs and never changing and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Hope you have some vineyards that you hold on to. I hope, hope your wife is your vineyard or your husband's your vineyard. Amen. Hope your children are your vineyard. Amen. Hope your King James Bible is your vineyard. Don't, don't get swayed by quote unquote something better. Hope your salvation is your vineyard. I hope your godly friends are your vineyard. By the way, can I say godly friends? Can I just say your church? Amen. We got a good church. Amen. A wonderful church. It's the people right there. Hold on to your vineyard. Love the people here. Your opportunity to pray. We're done. Grace Baptist Temple, once again, do you have a vineyard? Hold on to your vineyard. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, we love you.